Today we're going to look at getting started with RAD Property Grid. RAD Property Grid is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. RAD Property Grid provides an easy and versatile approach to processing data objects properties. It can be bound to an item with just a single line of code and you may start exploring or editing its properties. The property editor controls are auto-generated. Text fields for string properties, check boxes for booleans, date time pickers for dates, and so forth. In this video, we'll see how easy it is to bind RAD property grid to a data item, then bind to an existing control such as RAD button. We'll also discuss setting up property definitions, which will allow us to customize the data displayed inside RAD property grid. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are, we're back inside of Visual Studio 2010, and I'm going to simply go File, New, Project. I'm going to select RAD Control Silverlight Application, and I'm just going to give it a name here of RAD Property Grid GSTTV for a Getting Started Telerik TV, and then I'm going to press OK. Next up, we're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website, and we're going to be using Silverlight 5. So after we press OK, the next dialog box pops up and this is the project configuration wizard. So I'm going to scroll down just a tad bit here and I'm going to place a check here in telerik.windows.controls.input. And as you notice that when I placed a check in that, back up here at the top, it also added telerik.windows.controls. I'm also going to place one more checkbox here and that's in telerik.windows.controls.data which is also going to be a reference that we're going to need for this project and if we scroll down you'll see that it automatically placed a check in telerik.windows.data for us so I'm going to go ahead and hit finish here and you'll see our Silverlight 5 project spinning up And now that that's complete, uh, we're going to come over here over references and we're going to see that Telerik.windows.controls, Telerik.windows.controls.input, and Telerik.windows.data have been added to the project for us. I'm going to go ahead and close this references and we're going to track this over just a tad and we're going to expand our XAML and we can see underneath user control that the Telerik XML namespace has automatically been added for us. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bind the RAD property grid to a data item. So we're going to begin by going inside of the grid and simply typing in Telerik RAD property grid and we'll just go ahead and give this a name of property grid 1 and then we'll just simply close out of the tag. So as you can see here on our designer we now have our property grid. But let's go ahead and let's bind this to some data that we are about to add. So let's go into our main page.xaml.cs and I'm going to scroll down right here to the end of this class and I'm just going to paste in an employee class. So this employee class has a first name, last name, occupation, a date time of starting date, and then a boolean is married, and then a salary. So the only thing that I'm going to need to add in next is going to be a loaded event. And we're just going to paste in a this dot property item property grid one dot item equals new employee and then I've just added a little bit of sample data here. So let's go ahead and run the project. So the project is loaded and we can see that our data items that we just defined, first name, is married, last name, occupation, salary, and starting date have been added to the property grid automatically for us. And of course the checkbox here for is married which was a boolean we can toggle those properties we can come down to a starting date and we can actually get a little drop down if we wanted to change the date here 
So this is just a first sample of binding the property grid to a data item that we defined in code behind. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like by binding this to a, something such as a rad button. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this project here and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of some of the sample data that we just defined. So I'm going to switch back to my code behind page which was my main page.xaml. So now that we're back on the main page.xaml, I'm going to simply expand this window and we're going to get rid of the property grid that we added earlier and I'm going to paste in a code snippet here. So we begin with a column definition and this is the first one's going to have a width of 300 and the second one with a star. Then we're going to add a rad button. The rad button has a content of Telerik and basically just a name of test button. Then I add a rad property grid which has a name of property grid 1 but the item is actually binding to the element name of test button 1 which is this button that we added just a second ago. The grid column is going to be 1 and the label column width 180. Now one special property to pay attention to here is auto generate property definitions. So for this first sample I'm going to select yes we want to auto generate the property definitions but in just a moment I'm going to turn that back off and we're going to create those manually. So if we go ahead and we run the application as is our application loads we have our button here named Telerik and we can see all of the different properties to it. So I can scroll down just a little bit here. I could go ahead and maybe toggle the horizontal alignment here and we'll just go ahead and put that back into a center. We could toggle is enabled. We could come down to the style. We could set a tag. We can change the vertical alignment if we would like. But the one thing about all of these properties here is that you may not want them. You may only want a couple of different properties. And properties such as background and border brush, you would probably want them to be able to select a color for these two instead of just seeing that what type it comes from. So let's go ahead and explore doing that. I'm going to close out of that window and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch back to my main page.xaml.cs and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste in uh, two classes here which are simply going to be two converters. So I'm going to use Control shift u to fix my using statements. That is something that you can use with just code if you have that enabled. Otherwise you can just hover over and you'll see which using statement you need to add. So the first one that I'm going to use is going to be a color to brush converter. This converter here is actually going to allow us to select a color instead of see the we just saw just a moment ago. Then I'm going to have a thickness to string converter. And this is going to allow us to return a new thickness. And if you give some sort of input that we don't know what it is, we're just going to simply show this message box. So now that we have both of the converters in our project, I can switch back to my main page.xaml and I'll need to add a new XML namespace for local. So now we have our XML namespace of local. I'm going to come just below our grid and I'm going to drop in some grid.resources. So these grid.resources are going to be mapped to our color to brush converter and then our thickness to string converter. And you see we have a couple of different data templates set up here. So we have a data template for named border thickness template and we have a text block text equals binding border thickness and then the converter is thickness to string. We have another one set here for our border brush template and then our foreground template and then finally our background template and you see the converter on all of these is going to be the color to brush. So the only thing that is left is setting up our property definitions so I can come back to where we had our 
Telerik RAD property grid and I'm just going to paste in a new one and we can see we have our RAD property grid we're giving it the name it's still going to be the item is still going to be binding to an element name of test button which we see here and our auto generate property definition it was false now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to turn that on to true and now we're going to define what items are going to be displayed so we can see Telerik rad property grid dot property definitions we're going to be binding to height to width the foreground and the background and we can just scroll over just a bit here and we can see that the editor template is our foreground template then we have our background our border brush a thickness vertical alignment and horizontal alignment and of course I've set a couple of other properties here such as of course our display name the group name is just called layout here and then I've added just a short description where we can see that in the property window so we're going to go ahead and we're going to replace the property grid that we had a little bit earlier with our new one and we can see not a lot has changed here except for the auto generate property definition it's set to false now and we're actually setting our own property definitions so we have uh, several property definitions defined here we have one that's bonding to height, width, foreground, background color border brush, the thickness, the vertical content alignment and then the horizontal content alignment and you can see here that the group name I've just named these layout and then the display name is height you can go ahead and you can add a description if you would like that will be shown in the rad property grid I went ahead and added a description for all of these the only thing special thing to note here is that there is an editor template that I'm using for the foreground background border brush and the border thickness and inside of the editor template you can see our static resource that we just defined which was our foreground template background template border brush and then border thickness template and we define those right here so let's go ahead and let's run this application So I've started the application. We have our Telerik button here. So for the background, we may want to try another color. So I've just added that color. And the border brush, well, I'll just add it to something like a red, reddish color. Maybe you can see that, or an orange color here. Then the border thickness, and if we added some other number like 15, remember we'll have our message box it'll be displayed and we can go ahead and we can add in that thickness here we'll just add 15 15 15 and 15 and we have our border thickness we can change the foreground color if we would like as well as the height, horizontal alignment vertical alignment and width I hope this video helped and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements.